Well, this is Guns, Knives, and Watches, and this is a knife that I knew have known about for a while, and I've watched people review them and do this, there, or the other. But because of its cost and what it would actually would do for you, I didn't really want to buy it and then put it on the channel. What it is, it's the Swedish Fire Knife from Light My Fire and Mora Knives. And you can kind of get the stuff here, da 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 da, made in Sweden. But I was just kind of lukewarm to the to the knife because I thought, well, if it's just a thirty dollar Mora, then you know what's that all about? Just having a fire steel in the back, I can buy a Mora and get the fire steel. This one's got some funky grind on the front of it. Well, I'm here to tell you that actually my first look at this knife and everything was a little probably mistaken. The reason it is is because now you can get this knife at Sierra Trading Post and with the 35% off coupons, and I'll try to post some more. Uh, unfortunately, right now there are none going on. You can pick this up for under $17. And they have a couple different uh, colorations in this there or the other. Um, but it's a stainless steel blade. It is the standard thickness. It has a 90 degree spine on the back of it. And click the handle and a ferro rod comes out. Because of that 90 degree spine, of course, it will strike the ferro rod. This is the same size ferro rod that they have in the uh, Light My Fire Scout. Of course, with a modified deal. That was my one of my reluctant things about this knife was because well, 3,000 strikes, and then I have to, you know, do something else, get another one, da 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 da. So it became very perishable. At $16, though, and for the weight, this thing weighs about three and a half ounces. It comes with a lanyard with that little thing of bob on the back of it. And another thing is, one of my reluctant things about this knife was the fact that the ferro rod was very exposed there. And I understand that's marketing. But ferro rods, I thought about, you know, ferro rods want to actually corrode once, once they're exposed to water. And I thought, well, you know, the ferro rod being exposed like that might create a hot spot in the handle. You know, and it might. I, normally when I wear, use a knife, I wear gloves. Uh, like a mechanics glove or something like that. Just something to give my hand a little more uh, abrasion resistance, that type of thing. So, the holes in the handle really, for the one that I'm testing, and I got it in orange, I really don't like the orange coloration, I like the green coloration a lot more. Um, don't know why, it's an aesthetic thing. Um, it hasn't become an issue. Uh, as far as this coming loose on the back. For about three and a half ounces though, it's a really nice knife to have in a pack. Uh, it doesn't have as large of a handle as like the Mora Bushcraft Black or the Force. I'll pull up a Force over here. Now this is the stainless steel Force. And if you look at the difference between the thicknesses of the blade, um, the Force has a little bit thicker I don't know the thickness of these off the top of my head, and it's a little bit, and it's a it's a slad tad bit longer. But as I said, this is a sixteen dollar knife, weighs three and a half ounces. This one weighs about five and some ounces with its sheath. Now, one other thing, one other kind of deal, and I'm just throwing these videos together because anybody that knows me knows I'll sit down and make ten videos in an hour or you know, 10 videos in two hours, and then throw them up on the website over a few weeks. But that gets a little funny once we uh, get into some other issues. Now, I'll, I'll going to deal with some of those issues in this video, but at the end of it. The Mora Bushcraft Black, which is my other kind of go-to knife uh, from Mora right now, is a very heavy-duty also has that 90 degree spine on the back of it. But one of the problems we've had with these Mora knives are they're not full tang. And anybody 
who's hard use on knives is going to come back with that. Well, these are uh, rare earth magnets, and they're very, 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 very strong. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you basically if I can keep a hold of them where the tang ends on this knife. Now, we have no grip there, we have some grip there, and that's where it kind of wants to center. So our basic tang on this knife comes in right in here, okay? Now for the more bushcraft black, it's roughly the same location. Now, let's do the force one more time, just so we have a good reference. Roughly the same location. Now, might be a few millimeters difference, but not much. Now, this Mora, like my fire knife, is rated as having a half tang. So, if you look at the design and engineering, you would honestly probably sit there and say that the tang ends right in through here. And I haven't seen anybody really address it on videos on YouTube. Now I only watch the YouTube videos after I purchase the knife and I'm going, there's something a little different here. In three and a half ounces, this is a usable tool. But let's figure out, you know, how usable it is. Well, of course, if you had the new Bushcraft Triflex, you know that the tang ends like right in here, okay? I mean, that tang goes right through here, and it's, it's really not a very long tang. It's really a really piss-poor design. But this one, of course, let me do that a little different way, has a tang there. Of course, it has tang there. And she's still gripping right there. Let me try and do it upside down so that we have a, a fair representation. So basically what we've got is we have a tang, and I guess these magnets together are too heavy. That's what I get for for that's what I get for putting three rare earth magnets together. Um, but they'll sit there right like that. Now I start to get some force just through the magnetic fields once I pull it past there. That's one of the reasons that I need people who watch this channel to be a little more educated to understand magnetic fields and this, that, or the other. That was one of the questions that I got, uh, one of the criticisms from my one of my videos about uh, IQ and this, that, or the other. One, I want people that have... I want idiots off my channel, number one, okay? I would really like it if you, you would have to... <laughs> I would really like it if I could restrict you to somebody off the old channel that had been subscriber for years. Um, but there it is. But I can't do that. So now what I've done the last couple days, you'll notice that a lot of the subscribership has gone down. And that was me deleting them. If you've been deleted here lately, sorry about your luck. I don't have time to mess with it. And that's just the way it works. And that's the easiest way for me to deal with it. So the ferro rod really, in the end of the day, could not be used as a reason for this to be magnetic and for that to stay there. So I would sit there and say that this tang of this knife basically comes somewhere right in through here. Right down to here. So it goes into a very fine rat tail through there. Now, I don't know how they did their rounds here, or how they did their design through here, but this is almost, uh, it has as long a tang as these other knives, which makes sense because it has uh, very close to the same price point. There's another thing about this knife. It has a little smaller handle and is great for smaller people. Um, of course, I have no problem with the thickness of the blade. I have no problem with it being stainless steel. The sheath, on the other hand, is slightly upgraded. Now, it has an upgraded thumb push away, whatever the hell you call that thing. I'm not in the knife industry, and I don't care. Uh, you know, if you want to know how to make guidance systems, I can tell you to do that. Um, and then it has an upgraded clip, as far as you can just clip it over there. It's got that little thingamabob. 
once you put it on a belt, eh, you may or may not easily be able to get it off. But the sheath's really good. I really like the big hole in the bottom. And they, they've actually changed a few things. It wasn't just they took a standard uh, Mora sheath and uh, repackaged it and gave you, you know, charged you 30 bucks for it. Well, now it's 16 some dollars if you use one of the 35% off or 30% off coupons that uh, I post on my channel quite often. And, uh, you know, not a bad deal. But what it's done is it's my backup knife now um, in a lot of my kits. So, I was wrong. Light my fire. Mora did a great job. And uh, these are my three favorite Moras right now. One, because this is so light and it gives you so much versatility. Uh, here, because it's so durable and it's stainless steel and it's not as thick of a blade, which makes it e very easy uh, to... Uh, to work with and then this one just because it's thicker and it'd be just, you like batoning it anyway this is guns knives and watches and have a good one